Describe the events of the Korean War and its results. Do you want to know what caused the Korean War and how it ended? You might be very curious about why South and North Korea are divided. Let me tell you about the Korean War. When World War II ended with the Allied victory in 1945, the colonial rule of Japan and Korea was also finished. Korea had independence. The north of the Korean peninsula was under the control of the Soviet Union and the south was under USA. These nations' ideologies were different and North Korea forcibly wanted to occupy the south, so they invaded south over the 38th parallel. The war broke out on the 25th of June, 1950. To defend South Korea against communism, U.S. military troops joined in the war and General Douglas MacArthur from U.S. showed great leadership and led South Korea to victory in the end. If you watched the movie Operation Chromite, you can learn more about it in detail. The Korean War lasted for three years and ended with the truce agreement at Panmunjom, which is now called DMZ. DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. Describe the overview of the history of Korea. Korea has a very long history starting from 700,000 years ago. That's why there are various historic relics and culture in Korea. Since our peninsula is connected to China and Japan is nearby, it played a role as a cultural channel between continents and islands. Korea naturally accepted Chinese culture, but recreated their own culture as well. Dangun, who founded the kingdom of Gojoseon in BC 2333, started ruling over Bronze Age civilization. Korea also had the Paleolithic, Neolithic, Bronze, and Iron Age like any other civilization in the world. By the first century, three kingdoms started to become established, and this era is called Samgukshide. Those kingdoms are Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla. Then, Silla unified three kingdoms, and another giant kingdom on the northern part called Baehe appeared as well. Then, Silla unified three kingdoms, and another giant kingdom on the northern part called Baehe appeared as well. The unified Shilla developed a rich and prosperous culture. Since they accepted Buddhism, we can easily find Buddhist culture in unified Shilla's culture. Wanggon established Goryeo and reunified the later three kingdoms, Hugogryeo, Hubekte, and Shilla. Goryeo accepted Buddhism, as we see in the Buddhist temples, Korean ceramics, and relics. Lee sung built Joseon and became the first king in 1392. Joseon encouraged Confucianism as the country's ideology. Joseon has lasted over 500 years, and much of Joseon's custom, culture, and social aspects are still being influenced in our modern life. In the late 19th century, Japan invaded Korea and was colonized by Japan from 1919 to 1945. Japan used the peninsula as a channel to assist war supplies and it left the remnants of colonialism. Japan lost in the Second World War and we achieved independence on the 15th of August, 1945. Then, the outbreak of war ended which made the nation of Korea split apart. Working very hard, Korea has developed rapidly in the last 50 years and plays a great role in many industries around the world. As I mentioned earlier, Korea has a long history and citizens are very proud of being Korean with all the achievements we've made so far. What evidence proves Dokdo belongs to Korean territory? There have been controversies about the historical state of sovereignty over Dokdo. There are several records that show Dokdo belongs to Korea. It was called Usando in various historical records, such as the Samguk Sagi, Annals of the Joseon Dynasty, and Dongguk Gyoji Sungnam from Goryeo and Joseon. 
It is written that Dokdo belongs to Korea on the rocks and memorial stone in Dokdo. Also, people who live in Dokdo are Koreans. When foreigners visit Dokdo, they should get a permit from the Immigration Office of Korea. On top of that, Dokdo is geologically 1.8 kilometers closer to Korea than to Japan. So, we can see Dokdo from Ulungdo. In 1905, when Japan claimed Dokdo via the Japan-Korea Treaty, it was due to Korea's lack of power and therefore illegal. In my opinion, we are forced to sign the treaty that day, so it is not right. What is evidence that Balhae belongs to Korean history? There are several pieces of evidence that Balhae belongs to Korean history. First of all, Balhae was built by the descendants from Goguryeo. Goguryeo, Baekje, and Shilla's history are quite similar together, just like Balhae. Chinese argued that the majority numbers of Balhae citizens were Maegai people, and the dominating upper class was Goguryeo people. It shows that Goguryeo people were ruling Malgal people. Balhae was founded by Daejoyeong from Goguryeo, and this is even recorded in the Chinese book Gudangseo. The last evidence I can tell you is the diplomatic paper between Balhae and Japan. There, Japan indicated the king of Balhae as the king of Goguryeo. With these pieces of evidence, we can say Balhae's history belongs to Korea. What are the achievements of the great King Sejong? We can see the statue of King Sejong in Gwangwamun Square in Seoul. He was the fourth king of the Joseon dynasty and ruled from 1418 to 1450. He achieved many great things during his reign, such as conquering Tsushima Island, defeating Japanese raiders, and developing the nation's scientific technology. But what he is most famous for is the creation of the Korean alphabet, Hangul, so that everyone in the country could learn to read rather than struggling with Chinese characters. Chinese characters called Hanja in Korea were so difficult and time-consuming to learn that reading was a privilege of the upper class. Thanks to King Sejong's foresight and consideration for all of society, we now have our own easy and simple alphabet. King Sejong is therefore highly respected and honored as one of the greatest kings by all Koreans, which is why we call him Sejong the Great. What are the achievements of Admiral Lee Sun Jin? Admiral Lee Sun Jin is very famous for the war named Im Jin Weiran, which was an attack by Japan in 1592. It was severely difficult to defeat the enemy, but his wise tactic, strategy, and insight led them to victory. He built turtle ships that had more power compared to Japanese ships. Lee Sun Jin was the Korean naval commander who is on the back of the 100 won coin. He is famous for his great victories against the Japanese Navy during the Im Jin War time in the Joseon Dynasty. Lots of movies and documentaries were filmed to commemorate his achievements. He is well respected up until now by Koreans, especially because of his military achievement at the Battle of Myeongnang. He only had 13 warships, but managed to defeat 133 Japanese warships. Throughout many series of battles, he left inspiring quotes to encourage his soldiers. Your Highness, I still have 12 battleships. We are at the height of battle. Don't let anyone know about my death. He died at the Battle of Noryang in 1598, fatally wounded by a bullet from Japan's army. The last words he left was, Don't let the enemies know my death. He didn't want his soldiers to be dispirited. How did the Joseon Dynasty collapse? The Joseon Dynasty lasted for 500 years, which is quite long. Joseon collapsed when Japan finally annexed Korea in 1910. Korea became a protectorate of Japan. In the late period of the Joseon dynasty, lots of Koreans hated other foreign countries having influence over their country. 
At that time, Korea supported the closed-door policy. Among them, Japan wanted to use Korean territory as a route to go over and conquer the Asian continent. Japan fought with Russia and China and made a forced unfair treaty with Godong, the 26th king of the Joseon dynasty. Japanese occupation went on for 35 years. Could you describe the Japanese colonization era? In 1895, the Empress Myeongseong was assassinated by the Japanese since she planned to stand up against Japan with the help of Russia at that time. Gongcheonggung in Gyeongbokgung is where the Eumi incident happened. We were gradually being colonized by Japan. So in 1910, Japan annexed Korea with the treaty that Japan was in control of Korea's sovereignty. The Japanese took over most of Korea's land. They destroyed lots of buildings and changed its name into Japanese-style names. They changed and took over all media, social policies, education, language, and all living systems into their own since they wanted to brainwash Koreans into thinking like the Japanese. Countless people who took action for keeping Korea's sovereignty were arrested, tortured, and eventually killed. In the 1940s, the Japanese started the conscription of Koreans to join the Imperial Japanese Army. Along with male soldiers, sex slavery for the Japanese army increased a lot. On the 15th of August, 1945, after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan surrendered to the Allied forces, which ended 35 years of Japanese colonization. We call that day Independence Day, and it is now an official national holiday. Tell me about any traditional market in Seoul. Public markets are one of the best places to really get to know how locals live. They offer travelers exotic sights, smells, and sounds, and I would like to introduce you to three famous traditional markets you can visit in Seoul. Gwangjang Traditional Market, Tongin Market, and Dongmyo Flea Market. First is Gwangjang Market, and there is a lot of great food and many things to buy. The entrance to this market is an alley you can see as soon as you exit Dongno Oga Station. The market is packed with snack stalls, which are called Pojang Matcha. They sell delicious snacks such as red bean soup, pig feet, blood sausage, and raw beef. Trust me, they taste much better than they sound, so grab a chair and sit once you find the stall you would like to try. This market is famous for Pindetok which is a kind of pancake made with mung beans. It is especially popular in the winter or on a rainy day. The pancakes go well with makgeolli, a Korean rice wine. And drug kimbap is also popular here. Compared to regular kimbap, it is much smaller and the taste is so delicious that people easily become addicted. That's why it is called drug kimbap. You can also see many shops that sell various vintage items. They are very cheap and they don't look half bad either. Tongin Market This traditional market has been around for more than 100 years. It takes around 15 minutes on foot from Gyeongbokgung. This market is widely known for its Doshirak Cafe. Doshirak means lunchbox in Korean. First, you buy traditional coins called yopjeon. Each coin is worth 500 won. When you use these coins, you can buy ready-prepared lunch boxes, or you can make one yourself. You can also buy vegetables to make Korean pancakes and other various side dishes with the coins. Also, Tongin Market is famous for oil tteokbokki. It is a little bit different from other tteokbokki, but it is still very popular. If you are curious, why don't you give it a try? Dongmyo Flea Market This flea market is known as the first flea market in Korea. The area is full of all kinds of interesting shops, both indoors and on the street. You can easily spend an entire day here because there are so many different things to buy, such as Korean folk items, souvenir, travel foods, and simple everyday goods that Koreans use. They also have watches, electronic goods, artwork, 
comic books, LP records, and so on. You can easily find many good bargains. What are the differences between Kayagum and Komungo? Both the Gayagum and the Gomungo are traditional Korean musical instruments. I will tell you the differences between them. The Gayagum has 12 strings on a sounding board, while the Gomungo has 6 strings on a resonator. You need to pluck the strings with your finger on the board when you play the Gayagum. However, you use a short bamboo rod to pluck the Gomungo with your right hand. The Gayagum has a high pitch sound but the gomungo has a deep, low-pitched sound. The gomungo is usually played for folk music and the gayagum for sanjo, which is a freestyle solo performance. Both instruments were played mainly at the king's palaces. What do Koreans do during solai? Can you explain solbim, tare, sebe, and doktam? Solal is one of the biggest national holidays in Korea. It is New Year's Day based on the lunar calendar. So, we say Happy Lunar New Year when greeting others doing solal. It is usually in January or February. Family members gather together to perform a special ceremony for their ancestors at home, visit their ancestors' graves, play folk games, and eat traditional food. Traditionally, Koreans wear traditional clothing called hanbok during solal, and these particular hanbok are called seolbim. But these days, people don't wear seolbim as much as they used to. The word seolbim means new clothes and are hoped to bring good luck and a fresh start for the year. While wearing the seolbim, Koreans perform a ceremony for their ancestors in the morning and pray for their family's well-being throughout the year. The ceremony is called tare and we put fruits, traditional pancakes called dun, beef, rice cakes, and other offerings depending on the local customs while bowing to our deceased ancestors. Also, younger members of the family bow to their elders and show respect. This is called sebe. Then, the elders deliver a blessing and offer loving messages to their kids in a ritual called tuktam. And the grandchildren are given money which is called sebe ton. This is a typical family routine during solai. Could you explain ondor? Ondor is a traditional Korean floor heating system. Many hotel rooms in Korea are designed with a modern version of the heating system, and most houses have it too. Koreans are accustomed to lying and sitting on the floor when they sleep, work, eat, and talk using a low table, while Western countries use a chair and raised tables. These days, many people sleep on a bed and work at a raised table, but the ondor culture is still deeply rooted in Korean lifestyle. Ondor keeps the room temperature warm for longer, and it heats the whole room evenly. The picture below is an illustration of the traditional ondor system. To briefly explain the system, there is a stove called agungi. Charcoal is burnt in the stove to create heat, which flows under the floor to the chimney. The black pot above the fire is a traditional rice cooker, so the fire also cooks the family's rice. The heated floor is covered by stones, clay, and oil paper, and is an impervious layer blocking the smoke and ash, but transferring the heat into the room. Korea's unique ondor culture is very interesting to foreigners, who use rugs and carpets with radiators in their house. Can you explain Seowon? Seowon were private educational institutions in Korea during the Joseon dynasty. Private academies now are perhaps the modern version of these. Seowon played an important role as both a school and a Confucian shrine. Many students at Seowon were upper-class aristocrats called Yangban. They prepared for government exams to become civil servants or military officers. Joseon was dedicated to Confucianism, and the Seoan educated their students about this philosophy. Please explain the hanbok. Hanbok is a traditional clothing in Korea. Nowadays, many Koreans still wear it on national holidays such as Chuseok and Seolai. In the past, Koreans used to wear it for family gatherings, but now they wear normal clothes. Hanbok is very beautiful and uses vibrant colorful designs with simple lines. 
Traditional women's hanbok consists of a shirt, dogori, round skirt, and tima. It is called tima dogori. The men's hanbok consists of a dogori and padi. The padi are the pants. These days, people wear hanbok during special holidays or occasions, such as when children celebrate their first birthday and weddings. Over time, hanbok became a ritual dress rather than a daily custom, but it is still loved by Koreans and is very popular among foreigners. There are lots of tour locations that offer hanbok wearing experiences. If you wear a hanbok, you get free admission to the palaces. Tell us about hanok. Hanok is the Korean word for traditional Korean houses. Ideal hanok homes were meant to be built with the mountain behind and a river flowing in front based on a geomantic principle called pesan imsu. The style of hanok differs between regions. There is normally a main room with special flooring called tetong, which keeps the house cool during summer. There is an ondo system installed to keep the house warm in winter. Thanks to the combination of tetong and ondo, hanok can be great places to live all year round. The interior walls of hanok are covered with hanji, which is a traditional Korean paper handmade from mulberry trees. Hanji controls humidity and keeps the heat circulating within the room. The structure and design of Hanok is distinctively beautiful, and the old but effective temperature control system is unique to Korea. To experience staying in a Hanok, there are tour programs which are becoming more and more popular. Popular Hanok villages are Bukchon and Namsangol in Seoul, and Jeonju Hanok Village in Jeonju. You can reserve accommodations online. What do Koreans do during the Chuseok National Holiday? Can you explain Bolto, Tare, and Gangang Sulle? Chuseok is a Korean harvest festival similar to Thanksgiving. It is one of the biggest national holidays in Korea. Koreans go to their hometowns to be with their families. They wear traditional clothes and perform a ritual ceremony for their ancestors called Tare. Koreans also visit their ancestors' graves and tidy up by cutting the grass in a ceremony called Bolto. As the festival occurs according to the lunar calendar, people pray and wish to the full moon. During Chuseok, Koreans have their own traditional group performance game called Gangang Sulle. At night, under the full moon, women gather around and make a big circle, singing, dancing, and playing in groups. A traditional food eaten at Chuseok is called Songpyeon. They are rice cakes filled with sesame, beans, and chestnuts. There's a saying that if a woman makes a pretty songpyeon, she will have a pretty daughter. Explain Korea's Grand Cell. Korea's Grand Cell is a big festival hosted by the Korean government. Some people call it the Korea Cell Festa. The festival is held for 33 days, and it is similar to Black Friday in the United States. In 2015, the Korean government named it Korean Black Friday. But they changed it to Korea Grand Cell, hoping to create the first global shopping tourism festival in Korea. During the festival period, you can also experience Hallyu cultural events. This festival offers special discounts for foreigners. Foreigners can also get many discounts on transportation, air tickets, accommodation, beauty products, and entertainment. Through this festival, the government hopes to promote Korean brands and products and encourage an increasing number of foreign visitors and tourists to come to Korea. Tell me about traditional Korean weddings. Compared to Western weddings, traditional Korean weddings are complicated. Traditional Korean wedding ceremonies were more than just two individuals joining together. It is an event uniting two entire families. However, Modern Korean weddings are different from the traditional ones. For example, wedding ceremonies used to take place at the bride's home, and the bride and groom would bow deeply to a wooden goose. During the ceremony, there was a table between the bride and the groom called Tare Sang, Kyobe Sang, Chinyong San, and Honne Sang. On the table, you can see candlesticks, a vase, chicken, rice, chestnuts, shot glasses, and more. 
Red and blue decorations of the candlesticks represent the groom and the bride. They put pine and bamboo into the vase to show how strongly they can keep their love. There are rice and chestnuts too, and they represent their wish for longevity and a large family. Tell me about Jangseng. Jangseng are traditional totems representing a spirit and are located at the entrance of a village. They are wooden or stone made sculptures with a grotesque and funny face. They are set to mark the boundary of a village entrance and surrounding area, and they also symbolize the guardian spirit of the village. Normally, two Jangsengs are placed, with one being the male and the other female. The male totem wears a hat of an official and is inscribed with the word Tonha Tejangun, meaning Great General Under Heaven. The female has no hat. And is inscribed with Tiha Yojangum, which means Great General of All. Tell me about the royal tombs and the red gate with the spiked top. Royal tombs of the Joseon Dynasty are located at 18 places in Gangwado, Seoul, Gyeonggi-do, and Gangwan-do. The royal tombs contain the bodies of kings and queens and are usually very large. For 500 years during the Joseon period, ancestral rites were performed every year. These reflected the principles and traditions of Confucianism. I will tell you about some of the royal tombs of the Joseon dynasty. King Sejong's tomb is called Yongneung and it is in Yeoju, Gyeonggi-do. Another location is Donggu-deung in Guri, Gyeonggi-do. Nine kings and queens were buried there, including Tejo. When you visit the royal tombs, you can see a red gate with a spiked top. It is a special shaped gate with two big beams and no roof. It has a trident, teguk shaped decorations, and red wooden doors. The gate faces towards the royal tomb and was set up to exercise evil spirits and protect the sacred and holy place. Tell us about the Korean Marine and Coastal National Park. There are four marine and coastal national parks in Korea. Dadohe, Daean, Hallyeo, and Pyeongsan Bando National Parks. Dadohe Marine National Park is the largest national park in Korea. Daean Coastal National Park is so large that it covers an area half the size of Seoul. It is a well-preserved ecosystem with a warm climate and over 400 islands with spectacular scenery. Hallyeo Haesang National Park was designated as the first marine and coastal national park in Korea with the shoreline stretching from Goje to Yosu in Jolado. Beautiful waterways with lots of inhabited and uninhabited islands give rise to its value. Pyeongsan Bando National Park is the only peninsula type park in Korea. Daesosa and Gumsansa temples are popular locations for tourists in this area. Explain the Korean national flag, Taegukki. The Taegukki is the national flag of Korea. It has a circular symbol in the middle with a white background and four trigrams. The white background represents purity. The middle circle divided into blue and red is called yin and yang. It represents the oriental philosophy of balance between yin, which is the darker side, and yang, which is the brighter side. These two opposite forces are complementary. In the corners of the Korean flag, you can see four different trigrams, which are called gon, gun, gam, and li. They represent sky, earth, water, and fire. All parts of the Korean flag represent the harmony, purity, love, and peace with all living beings. Do you know the history of the Rose of Sharon, the Korean national flower? Bugunghwa is the national flower of Korea. In English, it is known as the Rose of Sharon, but Koreans call it Bugunghwa. So, I will use Bugunghwa for our explanation. It is recorded that there were many Bugunghwa on the Korean peninsula in the past. So, I will use 
Mugunghwa for our explanation. It is recorded that there were many Mugunghwa on the Korean peninsula in the past. During the Japanese colonial era, many Mugunghwa were removed by Japan with the intent of suppressing the spirit of the Korean population. The Japanese removed Mugunghwa and planted cherry blossom trees instead. To counter this, Koreans tried to protect them, and that's why Mugunghwa reflects perseverance and immortality. The flowers overcame the hardships of Japanese rule, just as the Koreans did. Tell us about Taichum, the Korean mask dance. Taichum is a Korean traditional mask dance involving miming, singing, and talking. It was a popular entertainment among the common people for many centuries. The actors wore masks portraying people, animals, and supernatural beings. And they used satire to criticize the society and express the common people's emotions and displeasure, especially towards the Yangban, the upper-class aristocrats during the Joseon dynasty. They appealed to audiences to make fun of monks, ruling class, and shamans. This could be described as a form of therapy, as people felt happier and more relaxed after their bottled-up feelings of hardship were shared amongst each other. A more formal form of mass dance, known as Toyongmu, was performed at Palaces of the King and was designated as UNESCO World Heritage in 2009. What are the differences between Goryeo Celadon and Joseon Porcelain? I remember seeing ceramics in the National Central Museum in Seoul. In the Gallery of Ceramics, we can see both Goryeo Celadon, known as Tongja, and Joseon White Porcelain, known as Pekta. Korea has a long history of ceramics, and Goryeo Tongja is considered one of the most outstanding ceramics in the world with its glittering jade green glaze. Goryeo potters made cups, jars, and bowls with celadon. They used a unique technique called sangam, which involves carving and then inlaying patterns onto the surface of the clay. The Joseon period's pekta porcelain was made with a transparent glaze and white clay. It was not intricately carved as it represents purity, cleanliness, and simplicity. The potters carved calligraphy onto the surface of the pekta, but this decoration declines in popularity. So the majority of Pikta ceramics are relatively simple and gracefully shaped. There are in total four bills in Korea. Describe all the people on the Korean bills. Korea has four banknotes with values of 1,000 won, 5,000 won, 10,000 won, and 50,000 won. On the 1,000 won note, you can see 퇴계 이황. He is one of the two prominent scholars and philosophers of Korean Neo-Confucianism. He founded the Dosan's Hoan, which was a private Confucian academy. He devoted himself to studying, meditation, and teaching his disciplines to his students, one of whom was Yulgok Yi. He is the other prominent scholar found on the 5,000 won note. Yi Yi passed the civil service exam at the age of 13 and devoted himself to Confucianism. Yuri Gok is his pen name. He is also known as a great reformer and politician with the deep trust of the king. On the 50,000 won note, we can see Shin Saimdang, the mother of scholar Yi Yi. She was an artist, writer, poet, and calligraphist. She represents the notion of good wife, wise mother to Koreans. She often drew insects, flowers, butterflies, fish, and landscapes. The last note is the 10,000 won bill, which displays the fourth king of the Joseon dynasty, King Sejong. Before the creation of Hangul, Koreans used Chinese letters to write, but since it was very difficult to learn and illiteracy among the population was high, King Sejong ordered the creation of the Korean alphabet Hangul to improve the literacy rate of the entire population. He is highly respected to this day, and you can see a huge statue of King Sejong at Gwangwamun Square in Seoul. Give an explanation about Cheonggye Chan Stream. Cheonggye Chan Stream is a long waterway that goes from the west to the east. 
It is 8.4 meters long and had another name during the Joseon Dynasty, Gecheon. As the stream construction was very old and worn down, it was put into a big restoration project in 2003. The merchants around Cheonggyecheon were worried and unhappy that their commercial districts would be undermined and destroyed. Also, they were concerned that the restoration project could cause flooding and traffic jams around the stream. However, after it opened in 2005, it has become one of the most popular places for tourists and locals to come and enjoy. This stream has been through a lot since it was named Gyecheon during the reign of the third king, King Taejong. The king fixed the area to make it into a drainage system because of many houses that were being built around this area. It then changed its name to Cheonggyecheon during the Japanese colonial period. It was also hard to keep the stream in good shape since there was no money. Then, after the Korean War, many people started to move into Seoul and make small houses next to the stream. This polluted the stream due to a lot of trash, junk, and other household refuse that was being dumped in the stream. Then, in 2003, there was a big project to get the stream back to its former glory. Now, everyone enjoys the peaceful and wonderful waterway when they visit the stream. By comparing its past and its current status, we can also explore how Seoul has been changed and developed into this fancy, amazing city. Tell us about Jeju's volcanic island and one of the lava caves on Jeju Island. Jeju's volcanic islands and lava tubes were designated as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage because of its natural beauty, unique volcanic landforms, and ecology. The three natural wonders are Mount Hallasan, Songsan Ilchu Bong Peak, also known as Sunrise Peak, and Gomun Orum Lava Tube. Hallasan Mountain is the highest mountain in South Korea. Its diverse and unique volcanic ecology and topography makes it more outstanding. It also has Bingnok Dam Crater Lake at its peak. Songsan Ilchul Bong has a wondrous sunshine and landscape. Gomun Orum's lava tube system has 360 volcanic cones scattered throughout Jeju Island. Jeju has numerous lava tubes. I will introduce Kim Young and Mandang lava tube caves. The caves had originally been connected but divided into two tubes because of a cave-in. Mandang Lava Tube is one of the largest lava tubes in the world, at about 7.4 kilometers long. On the other hand, Gimnyang Lava Tube is about 700 meters long. Inside of the cave, you can see various kinds of lava formations, such as lava stalactites, lava stalagmites, lava benches, and lava stone pillars. Describe traditional house styles in Jeju and Ulleung Island. The traditional house styles of Jeju and Ulleung Islands are quite different from the mainland because of its weather conditions. The traditional house in Jeju is very low and has a stone wall around it instead of a gate. The wind is very strong in Jeju, so people made stone walls to block the strong wind from blowing into the house. They fixed the roof by tying it with straw ropes to prevent the roof from being blown away. To enter the traditional house in Jeju, you need to pass the main gate known as Ole. The gate also helps block the wind from coming into the house. Also, there is a storage called Gopang in Jeju. It is literally a storage where you can keep food inside. Ulleung Island is a well-known snowy island. The special outer wall in Ulleung Island is called Udegi. A shingle-roofed house is built to protect against wind and snow. Do you have any recommended national parks in Korea? Mudungsan is the 21st national park and was designated in 2013. It is located in Gwangju, Jongnam province. There are various things to enjoy while you are there, but the main attraction is the columnar joints, which are beautiful and magnificent. That is why Mudungsan Mountain is called God of Stone Pillars. You can also enjoy watching the beautiful silver grass in fall. Compare the east and west coast of Korea. Korea has east, west, and south coasts. 
I will explain the differences between the East and West Coast. Compared to the West Coast, the East Coastline is simple and the water is deep. The waves are much stronger and most of the East Coast has sandy beaches. So the East Coast is a good place to enjoy swimming and sunbathing. On the other hand, the West Coast is different from the East. The West Coast has a wide range of mudflats, which is called getpur in Korean. It functions to purify the pollution of the ocean. Mudflats also help to prevent coastal erosion. It also purifies and dredges the pollution in the sea. Mudflats offer a vast living space for various sea creatures like crabs, shellfish, and starfish. Land reclamation projects are ongoing in the mudflats of the West Coast. The good thing about it is we can build more buildings and infrastructures there. On the other hand, this can also damage the coral, marine life, and ecosystems. So we need to bear in mind both the pros and cons of developing mudflats. One famous beach in the West Coast is Gochi Beach. Compared to other West beaches, it has soft and fine grain sand on the beach. That's why it is a very famous tourist destination. What kinds of theme parks are there in Korea? Theme parks are where entertainment, joyful events, rides, and attractions are located in one location with a certain theme for people's enjoyment. Well-known parks are Lotte World and Everland in Korea. There are lots of theme parks in Korea. There are too many to list, but I can list a few in Seoul, Gyeonggi-do, and other provinces. Seoul Namsan Park, Seoul Children's Grand Park, Lotte World, Guam Park, and Gildong Ecological Park are some theme parks in Seoul that come to mind. In Gyeonggi-do, Petite France, Ayin's World, Everland, and Paju Peaceland are great places that I recommend. Some more beloved theme parks are Somjinggang River Train Village, Gunsan Jinpo Maritime Theme Park, 518 Memorial Park, National Debt Redemption Park, and Dongdongjin Hourglass Park. I hope all these theme parks in Korea can play great roles for promotion and branding. Describe the types of caves in Korea. The caves in Korea are normally classified into three types, limestone caves, sea caves, and lava caves. One of the most famous limestone caves is Gosu Cave in Danyang. We can see various cave creatures inside of Danyang Cave. It is also known for strange rocks and bizarre stone formations. Jeju Island has around 80 lava caves because it is a volcanic island. One of the most famous lava caves on Jeju Island is Manjang Cave. Manjang Cave is said to be the longest lava cave in the world. The inside is rough and dangerous, so expect to spend long hours there. You can observe various animals and insects there. Gwangmyeon Cave is in Gwangmyeon and is very close to Seoul. When Korea was colonized by Japan, the Japanese plundered the mine and Korean mine workers had to work in harsh conditions inside the cave. The cave is reopened in 2011 and now is open to the public as a tour site. Chodong Cave is in Samchok, Gangwondo. It has many underground waterways and stalactite formations. It is also the largest cave among Korea's limestone caves. Where are the famous hot springs in Korea? Several places are famous for their hot springs in Korea. I would say Onyang, Suanbo, and Yusong Hot Springs are representatives in Korea. Onyang Hot Spring is in Asan Chuncheongnam-do, which is one of the oldest hot springs in Korea. Its water contains high levels of alkaline, which is very good for the skin. This hot spring has existed since the Baekje dynasty. And King Sejong from the Joseon dynasty stayed here to cure his eyes. Suanbo Hot Spring in Chungju Chungcheongnam-do is the first natural hot spring in Korea. Its water contains large amounts of sulfur and radium. King Tejo from the Joseon dynasty often visited here to cure his dermatitis. There's an area called Yusong in Tejon City. In Yusong District, you can find a lot of hot spring-related theme parks. 
They have built new modern accommodations and facilities to enjoy hot springs. These days, the combination of theme parks and hot springs are attracting people and becoming popular. For example, Sodak Water Park in Gwangwan-do, Bugok is very popular. 